Good morning. Thank you for joining me today. I slept in because, well, if you will know one thing about me, it's that I don't sleep well. Last night was one of those nights, so I was up to like four. So I slept in. I think I earned that. Today I have a small group with my friends through Zoom. Uh, also, my cousin is getting married through Zoom. Uh, we could have been there, but because of coronavirus, it was like, ah, and I'm really sad about that. But I'm glad that we have Zoom at least to uh, be a part of that day. So congratulations, Josh. And it's also his birthday, so big day for him. Happy birthday, my bro. Listen, if you don't clean your tongue, what are you doing? That's where all the stank hides. So yeah, today, uh, Josh is getting married, like I said, um, and Josh's dad is kind of like my mentor um, in terms of ministry. He, well, first of all, he's been so involved in my life, but he's a pastor, and he dedicated me as a baby. He baptized me. And when uh, it was time for me to get married to Raquel, uh, he officiated that wedding. And so he's just been super involved in my life. I did like a summer internship with him a few years ago and just got to like job shadow him. And like, it was that summer that I was like, you know what, for sure, like I can be a pastor. I kind of like this and uh, it's more than what I thought it was originally. And so this family is very important to my life and it makes me sad that we can't be there. But you best believe we're gonna be on Zoom. So today's our last day here in Florida and um, we're about to eat. I mean, we've been eating. That's just part of whatever. Whenever we come to Florida to see family, I just give up on any kind of diet I was on <laughs> because our family can cook, man. They can throw down. And uh, well, right now, we're about to eat uh, some Brazilian, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, but churrasco. Um, yeah, Raquel's mom and grandmother put together this whole lunch for us and I'm hungry. Let's go. I'm finally done. <laughs> I feel like I just keep going and going and going. But I guess that's the life of a student getting their masters, right? The older you get, the less breaks you get. But whatever. I finally finished the two classes that have been keeping me from summer break, of which will really only last a few more days. <laughs> right now, Right now, Raquel and I are uh, in Orlando, Florida. That's where we were both raised. And so right now we're visiting family. Anyway, coming to Florida was supposed to be somewhat of a break. Um, and it's kind of been anything but. Um, you see, the day we landed in Florida, my aunt passed away suddenly from a, from an aneurysm. No one saw it coming, man, uh, and it doesn't seem fair, but that's kind of like the first thing we did. The whole week here, the first week was kind of a wash, other than uh, getting to celebrate Raquel's cousin's birthday. But yo, it was sad, man. It's weird, right? And uh, 
I don't know. I, I feel like with death, like being a pastor I, and believing in this hope that it's not forever, you know, you know all this good news, not air quotes, it is good news, but you know all this good news and you feel like it keeps you from like actually feeling sometimes. Um, but I felt this one, man. I was strong throughout the whole thing uh, because I they asked me to kind of, you know, preach the homily and give everybody some hope. And I got through the whole thing, being up front, seeing my aunt there, which was really hard. And at the end, like Raquel says, I just exploded. Like all of that emotion just released. And it was exhausting. <laughs> I know my cousins, uh, my aunt's daughters, I know it's been hard on them, and uh, I know they're also exhausted, but what I'm saying isn't to diminish that hope, because it is a big hope, um, it's a big deal, and honestly, it's stuff like that that keeps me going, it, you know, motivates me to live another day in this crazy, crazy world. I mean, we all know it's crazy out here, but without that hope, what do we have? This week, last week, that's what I was resting on, 100%. After the funeral, then I have more classes, and I was kind of behind, because my original plan was to just go hard in the paint the first week I was here, and chill the second week, but the funeral. So now I was playing catch up, I finally finished this paper, Guys, when I tell you I am super, super, super burned out, I don't know, I've just been in school forever, it feels like, but I'm done, at least for a little bit. And it's those little breaks. You look forward to those little breaks to get you, you know, the energy to keep going. Um, so I'm looking forward to resting and kind of investing in uh, my time here in the vlog and do... Um, Kind of hone my craft, if you will. I'm excited. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I almost forgot. Um, ugh. Raquel and I joke around a lot about moving to Berrien Springs and being up there. It's not been easy on us. It's not been the greatest thing ever. Uh, we've had to move four times over the course of two years. Actually today, what is today? Today is the 30th of July. It is the anniversary, the two year anniversary of the day we left to move to Michigan. And <laughs> it's just been downhill from there. <laughs> I'm kidding, but not really. Um, we've had to move four times within two years. And yeah, we joke around that we have this curse. Um, earlier this week, as if the funeral and catching up on uh, an intensive, two intensive classes wasn't enough. Our landlord calls me and he says, Ben, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um, but, you know, there was a leak in your apartment. We, we got in and we looked at it and we're gonna get some people to come clean it. <laughs> After moving four times and just being like, you know what? What else should we expect from Michigan? Um, I was just kind of like, okay, you know, do what you need to do, man. Well, later that evening, he called me again, but this time he sent pictures. He texted me pictures along with calling me. Now, trigger warning or whatever, like if you're eating, like finish eating and then come back and look at this or just skip this part. When I tell you I underestimated how bad it actually was, like, my thoughts were that it was down here, but really, like, it was just out of the frame. It looked like Mount St. Helens just exploded, uh, uh, Pompeii, but of, like, poop and sewage. <sighs> Uh. 
Oh my goodness. You know what? It's fixed. They're just drawing the carpets now, but oh my word. Like, you'll see in the pictures, it soaked every inch of carpet in our entire apartment of poo poo water. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I am a firm believer that the devil tries to hurt his people. You know, sometimes he attacks your marriage. Other times, you know, he attacks your ministry. And sometimes he blows up your apartment with poopoo water. <laughs> but each time he's trying to discourage you and to take away your joy and your delight in life he just chips away at you right but we ain't gonna let him guys we're not gonna let him so to leave this section I want to read a verse uh, one that's meant a lot to me this week and uh, it comes to us from Psalms chapter 1 the first two verses it says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. It got me thinking because uh, this week I saw something kind of funny. Um, Raquel's family bought a cat or got a cat. The point is there's a cat here now. And uh, his name is Tom, Tom and Jerry. Uh, I'll put a picture of him sleeping here. And honestly, he's such a funny guy. He uh, gets into all sorts of trouble. But at the end of the day, he is a cat. And cats are killers, or at least they want to be, right? Another thing that Raquel's family has is birds, right? But this is the first time in a while that a cat has been introduced into the dynamic. They've had the birds for a while. And one thing I, we see Tom do is he will sit by the bird cage and, you know, he's staring at the birds and you know what's on his mind. And it got me thinking a lot about the law and this verse that I read this week. Uh, because sometimes I look at Buddy. Buddy is the name of their bird. I look at Buddy and I'm like, man, like, poor guy is like stuck in the cage all the time. And, you know, if he were in the wild, he'd be flying around and having a good time, but he's confined. Right? And I mean, how many times do we look at the law and we say the same thing about it? Oh my word, like, I'm confined by the, you know, the Ten Commandments. I'm confined by the law. I feel restricted. Right? But it's a thing of perspective, right? Because you see now here, Tom is looking at Buddy. Tom's stomach is growling. Tom wants to kill, right? In this case, the cage is not so much restrictive as it is protective. I think it's a lot about perspective, right? When we meditate day and night on the law, we see the beauty of the law. We see that it is not something to restrict, but to protect. Because right now we live in a world that is not perfect and it is not the ideal. And we have the law that God gave us and it serves to protect us. It's not here to restrict us. Imagine what would have happened if Buddy had not been in the cage or if the other birds hadn't been in their cages, Tom would have chowed down. And the Bible talks about the devil, that he's like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. I mean, Tom's not a lion, but he's a cat. And I mean, he's seeking to devour these birds, but the cage doesn't let him, right? The devil is trying to attack us. He's trying to discourage us with Mount St. Helens poop water, right? But when we meditate on the law day and night, that law protects us. You see, the, the devil can't take our joy. He can't take our delight. 
He can't hurt us if we are delighting, if we are meditating, if we are in the law. And the law ultimately is love. I mean, when we're surrounded by love, that restrictive quote unquote cage is there to protect us. And I just thought that was an awesome, like real life example. With that, try to switch your perspective and see the areas in your life that the law has actually protected you. Anyway, I'll see you over here. So my cousin's getting married right now. Wish we were there. I think the bride is coming. Piece of the bride accompanied by her father. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, but we're not gonna get to see it. We'll see it right here, yeah. There she goes. Who gives this woman, Emery Peterson, to this man, Joshua Lusbeth, the holy patron? I do. Okay, Josh with the fade. Hold up. Whoop. Wow. <laughs> Please remain standing as we open with a prayer. Well, the uh, internet went out for a little bit, so. Oh. I believe that. We're that? back. Then we will take those teachings to heart. And we'll have wisdom until death do us part. Oh no, the internet cannot go out right now. <laughs> Say it isn't so. <laughs> no! Okay, thank you. Yes! Oh, amen. Upgraded by the host. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you right now and introduce to you for the first time, Mr. and Miss Joshua Lusbeth. Congratulations, Josh. Again, really wish we could have been there. Um, but you guys look great. And uh, Demery, I know we only met like one time um, because Raquel and I have been gone for so long. But I look forward to uh, many, many, many more memories made with you guys and uh, yeah, just congratulations. All right, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for joining me in the first vlog. Uh, it's the first of many. Uh, videos will come out once a week. That's my goal is to do 53 videos this year. And uh, today's the day we leave. We're heading back to Michigan in a few hours. And uh, there's a nice breakfast downstairs waiting for us. Uh, as always, your family's always so good to us. <laughs> Praise God. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining for the first one. It really uh, means a lot. So uh, God bless you guys, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. See ya.